Welcome to the New Chemist podcast. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Here on the New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community research, and COVID-19. Welcome to the New Chemist Podcast. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and a variety of other platforms. Here on the New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as other sciences, careers, community research, and Nobel Prize lectures in chemistry, and we analyze their speeches, as well as we analyze thesis. We're happy you're tuning in. My guest today, or the subject of discussion for today, is neurodegenerative diseases. Today we'll be analyzing the work of myself in terms of my thesis, my master's thesis, and we will reflect on some of the big ideas associated with it. So, Thanks for joining me today, it's good to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform you about the work that we're going to look at today. Okay, so, grateful to have finished my thesis at IU. Um, I had the privilege of having Dr. Theodore Witlansky, a legend in the chemistry department at IU and a highly intelligent academic who is a professor of chemistry and also associate vice president for engagement at IU Bloomington. He's a very established professor. He taught me multiple times, at multiple times in class, as well as, as serving as my thesis advisor. Um, as well as I thank and grateful for Dr. Jarrod and Dr. Scrabulak. Grateful beyond words. So, so let's begin. When we, when we talk about neurodegenerative diseases, it's important to mention that it's a hot topic now. It's a very hot topic now because we understand that life expectancy has increased and given that statistic and given that fact, we have to prepare ourselves for other eventualities. So, um, let's begin. Cardiolipin, also known as diphosphatidylglycerol is localized and synthesized exclusively in the mitochondria. This glycerophospholipin was first characterized by Mary Pangborn and McFarlane in 1941. Presently, CL, cardiolipin, is considered a potential therapeutic target for several neurodegenerative diseases. Recent developments in the field of lipidomics indicate that the ratio of monolysocardiolipin to native cardiolipin is a valuable biomarker. For diagnosing neurodegenerative diseases such as Barr syndrome, studies have reported that protein lipid interactions are associated with the function and organization of the oxidative phosphorylation system. Cardiolipin constitutes 15% of the inner mitochondrial membrane lipids and is localized, synthesized, and deacetylated exclusively in the mitochondria. Neuronal and mitochondrial dysfunctions have been attributed to the abnormalities in the concentration and changes in the intracellular localization of cardiolipin. In this review, the role of lipidomics in understanding the function of cardiolipin in neurodegenerative diseases is reviewed. So there were several, I used a lot of abbreviations in my thesis, I went through a lot of abbreviations. We discussed things such as amyloid beta, amyloid beta progressive protein, um, one acyl dihydroxyacetone phosphate, Alzheimer's disease, adenosine diphosphate, one acyl glycerol 3 phosphate, acyl CoA lysocardiolipin acyl transferase. We discussed ANOVA when we reviewed a particular study. Study, uh, we talked about apolipoprotein E, 
Dancing Triphosphate, BN Page, Brunelia Polyacrylamide Gel Electrophoresis, Bar Syndrome, BTHS, Complementary DNA, Citadine Diphosphate, Diacylglycerol, Immature Cardiolipin, Mature Cardiolipin, Cardiolipin Synthase 1, Complex 1, which is also known as NADHT Androgenase, Complex 3, Bicanol Ferrocyacrome C Oxidoreductase, Complex 4, Cyacrome C Oxidase, Complex 5, ATP Synthase. CTP, otherwise known as citadine triphosphate. We talked about dihydroxyacetone phosphate, dihydroxyacetone phosphate acyl transferase. We talked about deoxyribonucleic acid. We talked about dual polarization interferometry. We talked about enzyme linked aminosomal assay, electrospray ionization mass spectrometry, electron the electron transport chain, fluorescent spectroscopy, frontotemporal dementia gas chromatography mass spectrometry, otherwise known as GCMS. We talked about HPLC, HPLC-MS, HPLC which is high performance liquid chromatography. We talked about HPLC-MS, or I talked about HPLC-MS, high performance liquid chromatography. Uh, we also talked, I also talked about the IMM, the inner mitochondrial membrane. We talked about the liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, otherwise known as LCMS. Also, I talked about LC3, microtubule associated protein like chain 3, lipopolysaccharide. Talked about a number of things large unilamella vesicles, lipid hydroperoxide, MALDI TOF MS. So, matrix assisted laser desorption ionization, time of flight mass spectrometry, MLCL, non MMP, mitochondrial membrane potential. Um, MPTP, 1-methyl-4-phenyl-1-2-4-6-tetrahydropyridine, mtDNA, mitochondrial DNA, NDDs, neurodegenerative diseases, um, nuclear DNA, nuclear magnetic outer mitochondrial membrane, oxidative phosphorylation, phosphatidic acid, polymerase chain reaction, phosphatidylglycerol, phosphatidylglycerol phosphate, polyunsaturated fatty acids, reactive oxygen species, ribonucleic acid, respirosome super complex. That's, that was a, a subject of delight for me. Um, sodium, dodecyl sulfate, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, alpha-synuclein, zetoshila, um, elampratide, a nice one, tephazin, thin layer chromatography, transgenic, um, I also, talked, I also talked about terminal transferase, biotinylated deoxyuridine triphosphate, NIC N labeling. And then I talked about wild types. Okay, so let's dive into the thesis. Understanding, so we have the introduction. Understanding the significance of cardiolipin in neurogenic diseases requires knowledge of two main areas, which include the role of IMM structure in neurogenic diseases. So the role of the inter, inner mitochondrial membrane structure neurodegenerative diseases and the significance of neurodegenerative disease biomarkers and protein signatures. And this, this is the structure as a review in which I looked at 68 plus journal articles as well as read through three different books. Um, one talking about neurodegenerative diseases, the other one talking in depth about the mitochondria and another one uh, looking at some studies associated with mitochondria and its role in bioenergetics and neurological diseases. So continuing on, these two areas can be better understood by applying lipidomics, which is a field of study in which lipid profiles are identified, quantified, and characterized to understand their role in biological systems. Recently, neurogenic diseases research has had a focal point around the mitochondria's role in disease development and diagnosis. Broadly, mitochondria have been at the forefront of biochemical research being a focal point for numerous Nobel Prizes in chemistry, including in 1978 and 1997, owing to its crucial role in cellular respiration, cardiovascular disease, and neurogenic diseases. In terms of function, mitochondria perform oxidative phosphorylation, an oxidative process in the inner mitochondrial membrane that synthesizes adenosine triphosphate. The exergonic flow of electrons in the inner mitochondrial membrane fuels the endergonic pumping of protons across the proteins in the respiratory complex, which drives the phosphorylation of adenosine diphosphate 
adenosine triphosphate via adenosine triphosphate synthase. Oxidative phosphorylation is a process that involves five protein complexes that constitute the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain specifically has three complexes. Complex one, which is NADH dehydrogenase, complex three, which is ubiquinol ferrocytochrome C oxidative reductase, and complex four, which is cytochrome C oxidase. Those three complexes form the respiratory super complex. Also in the inner mitochondrial membrane is ATP synthase which functions to synthesize ATP so of different analytical fields of study such as lipidomics. This review is centered around supporting lipidomics as a field of study to provide understanding of lipid, body acids, and steroids. In addition to lipid profiling, analyses of lipid structures such as the acyl chains of cardiolipin, neurogenic diseases. With neurogenic, likewise, the loss of function and asking typical proteins in neurogenic disease progression, such as alpha-synuclein and amyloid beta as for relationships between key protein discussion to uh, note neurogenic disease. Importance of cardiolipin in the mitochondria and cell. The lipid profile of the central nervous system plays a crucial role in the nerve, in the nerve cell. In nerve cell functioning, the cell is called the lipidome. It present lipids by dry weight and any aberrations in its lipid content can affect its physiology Knowing the lipidome is of utmost significance. Cardiolipin, also known as diphosphatidylglycerol, as shown in the figure for those who will see the video, is an unusual member of the lipidome because it is localized in the mitochondria during the entire lifetime of the cell, unlike other members of the lipidome. In a cellular context, decreased levels of cardiolipin contribute to abnormalities in cellular respiration and production of reactive oxygen species. Cardiolipin can also serve as a mitophagic and apoptotic signaling factor when oxidized. Mitophagy and apoptosis are defined as the breakdown and destruction of the mitochondria and cell respectively. In general, cardiolipin or cardiolipin as some people pronounce it, plays a role in the docking and anchoring of the ribosomes of the inner mitochondrial membrane and protein complexes of the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is situated in the inner mitochondrial membrane and cardiolipin biogenesis occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Further research into cardiolipin biogenesis described fully herein and shown in figure 3 which I will show you if you watch the video is warranted because of its importance in understanding the function of abnormal proteins in neurogenic diseases such as Barr syndrome. Interestingly, when the enzymes that biosynthesize cardiolipin are aberrant, they can contribute to neurogenic disease progression as has been seen in Barr syndrome. So here we see the figure that shows phosphatidic acid activated with citadine triphosphate plus phosphatidyl glycerol turns to cardiolipin. And here is the schematic with its chemical structures. The first step in cardiolipin synthesis is the synthesis of phosphatidate, a common intermediate for the synthesis of phospholipids and triacylglycerols. Many of these reactions with phosphatidate synthesize cardiolipin are driven forward by the hydrolysis of pyrophosphate. Phosphatidate in mammalian cells is synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum and the outer mitochondrial membrane. In the beginning, of this anabolic pathway. So anabolic we build, catabolic we break down. So anabolic we're talking about making something right now. Glycerol free phosphate either from glycolysis or the phosphorylation of glycerol is used. Then glycerol free phosphate with the addition of the fatty acid results in phosphatidate. Within this anabolic pathway, there are numerous acylations with the common intermediate phosphatidate. In these acylation reactions, the fatty acid chain is attached to the C1 atom and is typically saturated. However, the acyl chains attached to C2 atom are typically unsaturated. Important. Second, it is important to note that pathways diverge at phosphatidic, with some membrane lipid synthesis occurring in the endoplasmic reticulum or in the outer mitochondrial membrane. Third, in this anabolic pathway, one of the reactants, either phosphatidic acid or the alcohol, shown in the in figure 3A, if you look, you can see. Figure 3A 
has to be activated and its substrate dependent, specifically for the activated phosphatidic acid. The pathway starts with the reaction of phosphatidate with citadine triphosphate that forms an activated citadine diphosphate diacylglycerol, which is known as yeah, CDP DAG. Then the activated phosphatidyl unit in citadine diphosphate diacylglycerol reacts with the hydroxyl group of phosphatidylglycerol via cardiolipin synthase, as seen in figure 3b. There we go. To form a phosphodiester linkage and the resulting product is cardiolipin. So that's the cardiolipin synthesis we just discussed. The last step primarily using cardiolipin synthase. Now, cardiolipin and lipidomics. Lipidomics examines the total lipid profile of a given sample, which is also known as the lipidome. The lipidome is a subset of the metabolome comprising of subclasses of lipids, including fatty acids, prenols, sphingolipids, sterols, and glycerophospholipids. Lipidomic analysis provides information regarding the variation of lipids, which facilitates the study of different disease classes, such as neurodegenerative diseases as reviewed in section 4, which will be coming up. For example, Parkinson's disease has been associated with aberrations in a spectrum of lipid pathways in the nervous system, some of which may be related to cardiolipin dysfunction. Hence, the study of cardiolipin dysfunction via lipidomics improves the ability of researchers to further understand the future outcomes of specific phenotypes in neurodegenerative disease diagnosis and development. Now, disease overviews. In the neurodegenerative diseases that are reviewed in section 4, namely Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Barr syndrome, structural or concentration changes in cardiolipin phenotypes are simulated in marine models, so mouse models, in many of the studies. These simulated neurodegenerative disease phenotypes provide an empirical basis to relate cardiolipin changes to neurodegenerative diseases as potential risk factors for neurodegenerative disease development and diagnosis. So let's talk about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease that progresses gradually with worsening states of cognitive function, example memory loss, over time. There are three features of Alzheimer's disease that are relevant within the context of this review. First, Alzheimer's disease is a primary form of dementia with the World Health Organization. With the World Health Organization stating that 60 to 70 percent of dementia cases are contributed to by Alzheimer's disease. Dementia is a syndrome which presents with deteriorations in cognitive functions such as memory decline, poor judgment, and confusion, which is atypical when compared to the normal consequences of aging. Second, Alzheimer's disease is associated with bilateral, parietal, hypometabolism, and posterior cingulate neurons. In terms of Alzheimer's disease subtypes, there are two subtypes of Alzheimer's disease based on age of onset. The two types of Alzheimer's disease are early onset Alzheimer's disease and late onset Alzheimer's disease. Both early onset Alzheimer's disease and least onset Alzheimer's disease are associated with amyloid beta. Amyloid beta is a characteristic protein hallmark that is derived from the proteolysis, a proteolysis of amyloid beta precursor protein, which is a type 1 integral membrane protein. Third, Alzheimer's disease. So let's see, let's continue on with the discussion. Let's see. Let's continue on with the discussion. So let me pull it up. New discussion. There we go. Okay. So, third, Alzheimer's disease has specific mutations and symptoms associated with its subtypes. Early onset Alzheimer's disease and late onset Alzheimer's disease. 
Early onset Alzheimer's disease is characterized by six different missent mutations in amyloid beta precursor protein, while five missent mutations are associated with amyloid beta precursor protein in familial Alzheimer's disease. However, late onset Alzheimer's disease accounts for 90% of Alzheimer's disease cases. It is noted that the susceptibility to late onset Alzheimer's disease is associated with genes for apolipoprotein E and amyloid beta precursor protein. In terms of symptoms, amyloid, in terms of symptoms, Alzheimer's disease presents with a variety of symptoms such as age-related memory impairment, episodic memory loss, and disproportionate episodic memory decline. This episodic memory decline begins in the medial and temporal regions of the brain, and then as the disease progresses, it affects the visuospatial, language, and executive functions of the brain. In terms of diagnosis and patient sample analysis for Alzheimer's disease, the cerebrospinal fluid measures the total amyloid beta protein and tau protein concentrations, which provides insights into amyloid into Alzheimer's disease progression in patients. Let me read that again. In terms of diagnosis and patient sample analysis for Alzheimer's disease, the cerebrospinal fluid measures the total amyloid beta protein and tau protein concentrations, which provides insights into Alzheimer's disease progression in patients. So Kella et al. and Mangadelli et al. reported Alzheimer's disease to be characterized by specific protein signatures, including amyloid beta plaques, which accumulate in the brain during late onset Alzheimer's disease. Another hallmark of Alzheimer's disease is the formation of neurofibrillary tangles from hyperphosphorylated tau protein. Although there is not a direct mechanism known at this time, Keller et al. notes that there are indirect pathway mechanisms that trigger lipid aberrations. Further in this review, I suggest that cardiolipin and apolipoprotein E are significant within the context of amyloid beta pathology. First, cardiolipin when externalized by microtubule associated protein light chain 3, otherwise known as LC3, functions as a mitophagic signal and inhibits and so it functions first cardiolipin when externalized by microtubule associated protein light chain 3 functions as a mitophagic signal and mitophagy inhibits amyloid beta and tau pathology. Second, Apolipoprotein E affects amyloid beta by binding to it and promoting its clearance from the neuronal cell. Given the significance of cardiolipin and apolipoprotein E in amyloid beta pathology and processing either indirectly with cardiolipin or directly with apolipoprotein E, I suggest that more research is warranted on pathways associated with amyloid beta pathology. Specifically, more research is warranted on apolipoprotein E mediated amyloid beta clearance and on amyloid beta pathology inhibited by mitophagy that is induced by cardiolipin externalization via microtubule associated protein light chain 3. Furthermore, Kala et al. shows the importance of interpreting the lipid profiles in mitochondrial diseases. And with this understanding, concentration changes in cardiolipin in the brain are suggested to act as a diagnostic risk factor in neurogenic diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. This functioning as a diagnostic risk factor, as outlined in the Bar syndrome section of this paper, of this review, currently is known for Bar currently is known. So this functioning as a diagnostic risk factor as outlined in the Bar syndrome section in this paper um, notes that, bars, that CLA so chain abnormalities serve as a standard diagnostic risk factor for Bar syndrome. Let me read that one more time. It is known that for Bar syndrome Cardiolipin acyl chain abnormalities serve as a standard diagnostic risk factor for Bar syndrome. So the association of the association of Alzheimer's disease with changes in cardiolipin concentrations.
Montero Carlo said all investigated the role of cryolipin in mitochondria with an experimental model of Alzheimer's disease using lipidomics. The methods Montero Cardo et al. used involve high performance chromatography, Western block, spectrophotometry, lipid extraction, and quantification using a phosphorus assay. Finally, the separation of the phospholipid classes and quantification was done using high performance liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. Specifically, Montero Cardoso et al. used the lipid profiles of three month old non transgenic mice and compared those with alpha synuclein gene knockout mice. Montero Cardoso et al. reported the separation and quantification of phospholipid classes using high performance liquid chromatography mass spectrometry and electrospray ionization mass spectrometry. Also, Ontario Cardoso et al. reported a decrease in cardiolipin concentration in Alzheimer's disease mouse models. The key finding these scientists reported was that synaptic mitochondrial defects along with aberrations in cardiolipin profile represent key indicators for the development of Alzheimer's disease. Furthermore, Montero Cardoso et al. reported the dysfunction of synaptic mitochondria and energy depletion associated with a loss of lipid asymmetry contribute to amyloid beta accumulation and cellular dysfunction. Let me read that again. The key finding these scientists reported was that the synaptic mitochondrial defects along with aberrations in cardiolipin profile represent key indicators for the development of Alzheimer's disease. Furthermore, Montero Cardoso et al. reported that the dysfunction of synaptic mitochondria and energy depletion associated with the loss of lipid asymmetry contribute to am amyloid beta accumulation and cellular dysfunction. Guan et al. reported the use of brain samples from human cadavers that were diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. The patient had histopathological features such as neurotic plaques and neurofibrillary tangles in each cadaver's neocortex. The methods reported involved brain regions being chosen for lipid analysis dissected 36 hours after death. After death, the samples were homogenized and stored in negative 20 degrees Celsius until the analysis was done. Moreover, Guan et al. used high performance liquid chromatography and ultraviolet absorption spectroscopy to extract and quantify the lipid profiles from the brains of human cadavers with Alzheimer's disease via the Folge method. The Folge method is a type of lipid extraction technique based on the distribution of lipids in a two phase mixture of methanol and chloroform, which breaks the hydrogen bonds between the lipids and proteins. The data obtained using high performance liquid chromatography was monitored at 205 nanometers and each peak was collected and checked for purity. Likewise, the cardiolipid content was reported to be independent of the postmortem time of the cadavers with Alzheimer's disease. For the cadavers with Alzheimer's disease, the regions of the brain were chosen based on the regions that were severely affected morphologically by Alzheimer's disease. The overall experiment design centered around analyzing the cardiolipin content based on the region of the brain in the cadavers with Alzheimer's disease and the type of acyl chain within the cardiolipin molecule. The data obtained was primarily based on human cadaver cases. The significant conclusions of Guan et al. supported the idea that abnormalities in mitochondrial enzymes and significant changes in cardiolipin concentrations in patients' brains can potentially serve as risk factors for specific phenotypes in Alzheimer's disease development and diagnosis. The significant conclusions of Guan et al. supported the idea that abnormalities in mitochondrial enzymes and significant changes in cardiolipin concentrations in patients' brains can potentially serve as risk factors for specific phenotypes in Alzheimer's disease development and diagnosis. Guan et al. also measured the level of specific of cardiolipin specifically in the frontal and temporal cortices of the brains of human cadavers, primarily with Alzheimer's disease. Additionally, the major finding was reported as a statistically significant decrease of cardiolipin that contained the polyunsaturated fatty acids, which was in the temporal cortex of human cadavers with Alzheimer's disease. Subsequently, research by Cormier et al. 
involved examining the consequences of deficiency in tafazin, which is a gene that expresses a protein involved in the remodeling and the isolation of cardiolipin. First, Carmi et al. used the Thales gene of cotton model to investigate the relationship between cardiolipin molecular species content in the brain, mitochondrial functions, and cognitive decline. Second, Carmi et al. reported that Thales deficiency alters the cardiolipin molecular species content in the brain. Then, scientists reported quantifying the cardiolipin molecular species content by mass spectrometry. So they reported quantifying the cardiolipin molecular species content by mass spectrometry in the analysis. The analysis involved the use of Western blood, RNA isolation, and polymerase chain reaction analysis, thin layer chromatography, immunohistochemical analysis, extracting lipids from the whole mouse brain using the Fulch method, and then quantitation using mass spectrometry. Furthermore, Carmi et al. reported using transmission electron microscopy, behavioral tests, and statistical analysis in the analysis of cardiolipin content and tafazin deficiency in the marine models. So mouse models. Using the reported marine models, the scientists supported the claim that abnormal cardiolipin metabolism is associated with the specific phenotypes of cognitive dysfunction, which was memory deficiency for the mice, and hippocampal alteration, which was the derangement of the neuronal CA1 layer in tafazin gene of the mice. This phenotype resulting from tafazin in this tafazin gene lockdown model is relevant to Alzheimer's disease since episodic memory loss or deficiency is a characteristic condition of Alzheimer's disease. Again, this phenotype resulting from the tafazin gene lockdown model is relevant to Alzheimer's disease since episodic memory loss or deficiency is a characteristic condition of Alzheimer's disease. Moreover, the tafazin gene lockdown in the marine models used by Carmi et al. was effective in simulating the specific phenotypes of memory deficiency and hippocampal alteration. However, the use of tafazin gene lockdown as a complete model for Alzheimer's disease is not presented here in this review or by Carmi et al. Let me say that again. Moreover, the tafazin gene lockdown in marine models used by Carmi et al. was effective in simulating the specific phenotypes of memory deficiency and hippocampal alteration. However, the use of Stephazin gene lockdown as a complete model for Alzheimer's disease is not presented here in this review or by Carmi et al. Although Stephazin in this review is not presented as a complete model for Alzheimer's disease, it is however known that Stephazin is a major initiator of mitophagy. First, mitophagy can be mediated by ubiquitin, First, myofagy can be mediated by ubiquitin or receptor-mediated pathways, which include lipid-mediated mitophagy. Second, mitophagy is stated to inhibit amyloid beta and tau pathology. Third, it is known that amyloid beta pathology is characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. Hence, I suggest that the aforementioned findings further support the use of the Fasen gene knockdown model in mice. The use of a Tafazin gene knockdown model in mice as seen in Carmi et al. as beneficial in understanding the relationship between amyloid beta pathology and Alzheimer's disease. Also, I suggest that more research is warranted on the relationship of Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and development with Tafazin and the relevance of cardiolipin remodeling via Tafazin in the development and diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Again, Hence, I suggest that the aforementioned findings further support the use of a Tafazin gene knockdown model in mice, as seen in Carmi et al., as beneficial in understanding the relationship between amyloid beta pathology and Alzheimer's disease. Also, I suggest that more research is warranted on the relationship of Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and development with Tafazin, and the relevance of cardiolipin remodeling via Tafazin in, in the diagnosis and development of Alzheimer's disease. The association between the specific phenotypes of memory decline and abnormal cardiolipin metabolism mentioned earlier was deduced from marine models with the Fasin gene knockdown. Additionally, Carmi et al. reported structural abnormalities as well. 
Pyramidal polyethylene cryolipin with polyunsaturated fatty acid chain decreased, but cryolipin with stored fatty acid, fatty acyl chain, approximately 18 carbons, increased in the marine models that were studied. The Tafazin gene expresses an enzyme that reacylates monolysocardiolipin to produce cardiolipin. That's what we're talking about. This reacylation is significant as cardiolipin, when appropriately acylated, this reacylation is significant as cardiolipin, when appropriately acylated, contributes to normal structure of the inner mitochondrial membrane, which has implications for cellular respiration and normal mitochondrial function. Carmeda reported that the TAS deficiency, so the TAS deficiency in the brain, significantly decreased the total cardiolipin level and increases monolysocardiolipin levels. These scientists also reported observing that the TAS deficiency in the brain resulted in altered mitochondrial respiration, elevated reactive oxygen species products, and deficiencies in memory. The association of tafaz and deficiency in phospholipid, for example cardiolipin, content in the brain provided carmidol an empirical basis of understanding cardiolipid content and specific phenotypes in neurodegenerative diseases, diagnoses, and development. However, it is important to note that phenotypes such as pathological cognitive dysfunction, example memory decline, as discussed by carmidol, is implicated in several neurodegenerative diseases namely Alzheimer's disease. The evidence relationship between the pathological development of cognitive dysfunction and abnormal cardiolipin metabolism was presented in the Tafazin knockdown mice, which was related to a difference in concentration of cardiolipin. This observation of abnormal cardiolipin metabolism resulting in a significant decrease in cardiolipin amount and a specific phenotype of cognitive dysfunction provided further evidence regarding the association between cardiolipin and Alzheimer's disease risk factors in Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and development. Analysis of studies. These studies as listed in Table 1 we will discuss those have significant overlap in approach, results and conclusion. First, all three studies had hypotheses that focused on mapping out the relationship between components in the lipid profile so phospholipids, example cardiolipin, and specific phenotypes in Alzheimer's disease. Secondly, the studies report the use of high-performance liquid chromatography mass spectrometry as a separation technique to distinguish, characterize, and identify the lipid classes. Third, the studies primarily use eukaryotic models to study specific phenotypes in Alzheimer's disease in which Carmiodal and Montero Cardoso et al. required the use of murine models or mouse models and guanidol required the use of human cadavers brain samples. So just a quick snapshot of the studies that we just discussed. Carmiodal used methods such as quantitation, Western blot, TLC, lithothenia chromatography, mass spectrometry and transmission electron microscopy. The results that he got, the total cardiolipin concentration was significantly decreased. In the phase of gene knockdown, mice models are seen in decreases in cardiolipin species, 20 to 80 percent, mostly in long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. Conclusions Carmi et al. In the TAS gene knockdown marine model, cardiolipin with polyunsaturated fatty acids decreased significantly, and cardiolipin with shorter length fatty acyl chains, approximately 18 carbons, increased significantly. So, Montero Cardoso et al. Snapshot methods. He used quantification using HPLC, mass spectrometry, so high performance liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry. The results he got there was a decrease in the relative abundance of cardiolipin. In conclusion, cardiolipin concentration decreases in Alzheimer's disease mice models. So, snapshot of one is all high performance liquid chromatography and ultraviolet spectroscopy were the methods they use. The results we got were there were decreases in cardiolipin concentration in the frontal and temporal cortices. And the conclusion that he got or the conclusion that he got was cardiolipin concentration changes in patients with Alzheimer's disease as observed from general result in Guanyin and both
increases for cardiac lipid with short is carmiodon. With studies outlined that pleat disease model for Alzheimer's disease in animals was not presented here. However, these findings provide insights for further investigations on the role of cardiolipin in neurodegenerative disease research. Again, the extent to which these findings have therapeutic implications of the possi- or the possibility was not presented here. However, these findings provide insights for further investigations on the role of cardiolipin in neurodegenerative disease research. Conclusions about Alzheimer's disease. All three studies, Carmidol, Montero Cardoso et al. and Juan et al. supported that there is a relationship between the alteration of cardiolipin. Studies also support how changes in key members of the lipidome, namely, namely cardiolipin, when the caters, or caters, like members of the lipidome, such as cardiolipin and their functions as potential diagnostic risk factors. In 2021, Rome et al. reported that Parkinson's disease develops in patients due to the accumulation of alpha gene forming inclusion to causative gene involved in the early onset of familial Parkinson's disease characterized by five also considered to be involved in Alzheimer's disease. Parkinson's is pathological Louis trait is characterized by a cellular milieu that includes abnormal intracellular vesicles and pin structures, since cardiac maintenance of inner molecules, so mouse models, oscillating lipids, quantifying them, mitochondrial nuclein deposits, clustered to mitochondrial membranes as a result of exposure of cardiac mitochondrial morphology. Binding were also performed. Several key findings were noted. Yes demonstrated aberrations in alpha synuclein protein. Second, those neurons had impaired mitochondrial dynamics. In those neurons, cardiolipid alpha synuclein gene mutations demonstrated aberrations with alpha synuclein protein structure. Second, those neurons mitochondrial dynamics. Additionally, in those neurons, cardiolipid was externalized to the other mitochondrial membrane bound to alpha synuclein and refold cardiolipin to alpha synuclein and its folding behavior. The scientists reported mimicking the mitochondrial membrane using the cardiolipin that was present in large unilamellar vesicles with alpha synuclein. They also reported that the cardiolipin exhibited an affinity for and exhibited interactions with the wild type and mutant alpha synuclein monomers. These interactions were between cardiolipin and alpha synuclein monomers. With that noted, these interactions between cardiolipin and alpha synuclein monomers contributed to the refolding of alpha synuclein. In short, the results from the marine model supported that changes in cardiac structure for the Parkinson's disease marine models were associated with cellular oxidative stress and affected alpha synuclein monomers. Parkinson's disease models were also used by Song et al. who reported the induction of Parkinson's disease marine models via 1-methyl 4-phenyl 1-2-4-6 tetrahydropyridine, otherwise known as MPTP which resulted in oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction. In addition, Song et al. reported using ANOVA, which is analysis of variance, and that is a statistical method that separates observed variance data into different components to use for additional tests. Song et al. also reported using immune staining and confocal microscopy. And he reported, Song et al. reported that an upregulation of both the acyl chain CoA, excuse me, he reported that an upregulation of both the acyl CoA lysocardiolipin acyl transferase 1, ALCAT1 mRNA, and the protein expression. Those were observed. This finding that ALCAT1 isolation and remodeling, western blood staining, and cause induced neurotoxicity in table 2, which we will discuss. Alpha synuclein stability gene knockouts for CART seen in which remains were based on the premise of that electron transport chain. So in Chico et al, the methods they use or the methods they use reported were extraction and quantification of ETC. Mission electron micrographs 
binding results they got, response to cellular stress, oxidative stress, Western blood, renal staining and unfocal microscopy. The results that they got, upregulated ALCAT1, mRNA, lysocardiolipin acyltransferase 1 to ALCAT1, the strong analysis of these results been implicated in the pathogen catalyzed by the pathological remodeling of cardiolipin. These studies outlined the possibilities and needs for further investigation with coupling gene deletion and chemical. These required findings indicate the role of potential therapeutics that affect not only the enzymes in the respiratory and supercomplex, but also molecules that may complement to improving inner mitochondrial membrane integrity and the stability of proteins such as alpha synuclein, which is a hallmark protein signature in Parkinson's disease. So conclusions regarding cardiolipin and Parkinson's disease. The findings by Chico et al, Ryan et al, and Song et al using lipidomics supported the role of cardiolipin as a significant phospholipid in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Also the findings indicated that structural changes in cardiolipin isolation can potentially be biomarkers of neurogenerative diseases or co-indicators of specific neurogenerative disease phenotypes such as cognitive impairment motor deficit or pathological issues associated with senescence. Let's read that again. The findings by Chico et al, Ryan et al, and Song et al using lipidomics support the role of cardiolipin as a significant phospholipid in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Also the findings indicated that structural changes in cardiolipin isolation can potentially be biomarkers of neurogenerative diseases or co-indicators of specific neurogenerative disease phenotypes such as cognitive impairment, motor deficits, or pathological issues associated with senescence. So let's talk about Barr syndrome. Barr syndrome is a cardiomyopathic disease and is described as one of the first human diseases that has implicated cardiolipin remodeling issues as causal in Barr syndrome progression. Barr syndrome is a chromosome X-linked disease with myopathy and neutropenia. Typically, this disease is fatal in juvenile years due to cardiac failure and bacterial infection complications. In some instances, Barr syndrome is defined as a mitochondrial disorder and is isogenically mapped to the Tafazin gene. The etiology in some cases has been tied to aberrations in the Tafazin enzyme, which is a trans acylase that is essential for the biosynthesis of cardiolipin. Brecken et al. reported the incidence of defective remodeling of cardiolipin and phosphatidylglycerol in Barr syndrome patients. Using a patient sample size, n equals 5, and noting the electron transport chain complex deficiencies on a patient by patient basis, these scientists used fibroblast, fibroblast, cell culture, lipid extraction using the Folger method, lipid scintillation counting, and thin layer chromatography to separate the phospholipids. The key finding of the study was that fibroblasts from BTHS, so Barr syndrome patients, had reduced levels of cardiolipin and the phosphatidylglycerol and cardiolipin biosynthesis pathways were abnormal. Specifically, the incorporation of a specific acyl chain, linoleic acid, into phosphatidylglycerol and cardiolipin is significantly decreased. This decrease in inclusion of linoleic acid was quantified using lipid scintillation counting with the analyte. The analyte was radioactive labeled fatty acids, which were incubated with fibroblasts. The study fairly revealed, revealed structural abnormalities associated with phosphatidylglycerol and cardiolipin metabolism in Barr syndrome and fibroblasts when compared to normal control cells and other cells from patients with other mitochondrial disorders. In 2015, Angelini et al. reported the unique screening methods for BTHS using lipid profiles from leukocytes with BTHS, so Barr syndrome, that are compared with healthy donor cells. So they reported Angelini et al. in 2015 reported the unique screening methods for Barr syndrome using lipid profiles from leukocytes with Barr syndrome that are compared with healthy donor cells. Specifically, these scientists reported obtaining hematological samples from 24 healthy donors and 8 Barr syndrome patients. The blood cells were isolated using dextrin sedimentation techniques. 
Following the dextrin sedimentation, a lipid extraction protocol was modified to extract the lipids from the leukocytes. After the extraction, there were two analyses, one of the intact leukocyte membranes using MALD, TOF, and MASTO, which consisted later desorption ionization, time of flight, mass spectrometry, and then the analysis of miniature lipid extracts. Afterwards, the scientists reported using a ratio that included monolysocardiolipin, mature cardiolipin, and immature cardiolipin as a diagnostic parameter. The ratio that was used as a diagnostic parameter is listed below as equation 1. So the diagnostic parameter, monolysocardiolipin plus immature cardiolipin over mature cardiolipin. So that's the diagnostic parameter, the ratio that they used. And that was obtained that was for a bar syndrome from Angelini et al. Additionally, the composition changes as a result to valid mutations of monolysocardiolipin and cardiolipin were determined using data from matrix assisted data desorption, ionization, time of flight, mass spectrometry, and statistical analysis. Furthermore, those compositional changes as a result of files and mutations of monolysocardiolipin and cardiolipin were also used as a diagnostic parameter for Bart syndrome. The key findings were that the method requires minimal 1 ml of blood sample can be easily integrated into the routine work of a clinical laboratory and methods such as those required using matrix assisted data desorption, ionization, time of flight, mass spectrometry can potentially increase the laboratory's capability of diagnosing mass syndrome. In 2013, Gonzalez et al. reported changes in cardiolipin concentration due to tafazin enzyme dysfunction. They used high performance echochromatography, mass spectrometry, transmission electron microscopy, flow cytometry analysis, respiratory analysis, blue native polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, and sodium duodecal sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis in white blood cells from two unrelated patients with Bar syndrome. They reported the use of cell culture with lymphobastoid cell lines from two unrelated Bar syndrome patients. They reported the reported results from these Bar syndrome patients using the methods by Gonzalez et al led to the understanding of abnormal cardiolipin being associated with mitochondrial alterations. Along with the mitochondrial alterations, there was a lack of normal cardiolipin, which led to aberrations in electron transport chain stability. The scientists also reported decreased levels of complex 5, so at ATP synthase, which suggested CL, CL significance for other complexes beyond those in the respiratory supercomplex. So let me say that again. These scientists also reported decreased levels of complex 5, so ATP synthase, which suggested cardiolipin significance, which suggested cardiolipin significance for other complexes beyond those in the respiratory supercomplex, that's complex 1, 3, and 4. Additionally, the alterations showed a subsequent increase in mitochondrial mass, which were observed using high performance liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. Then, Electron microscopy was used as a visualization technique for lymphoblast mitochondria on the basis of multiple images of the surface of the cristae in the mitochondria, which were averaged into a three dimensional image of the inner mitochondrial membrane in the lymphoblast. In conclusion, Gonzalez et al. provided new insights into the pathogenesis of Bar syndrome. These scientists emphasized the effects of tafazin gene mutations and cardiolipid structure, which is contained in the microdomains in mitochondria and mitochondrial junctions affecting the cell's apoptotic signaling. Analysis of studies and conclusions. The studies by Reckon et al., Angelini et al., and Gonzalez et al. are summarized in Table 3, and we'll look at that shortly. And all support the idea that cardiolipin to monolysocardiolipin ratio is significant, with diagnostic sensitivity and specificity for Bar syndrome. For Bar syndrome diagnosis, cardiolipin based, for di cardiolipin based ratios are already used in the clinical determination of Bar syndrome. Also, the Boston Drone research reported by the scientists involved the use of tafazin gene 
knockouts as a loss of function type analyses, which could be originated from the changes in cardiolipin structure. The changes in cardiolipin structure provide an empirical basis for monogenic studies on the topazin gene, cardiolipin, and bar syndrome. Specifically, gene knockouts compared with the wild type marine models as well as studies with fibroblasts and lymphoblastoid cell lines provide a basis for understanding how cardiolipin structure is affected by tafazin gene mutations. Along with reporting the effects of tafazin gene mutations, it was also reported how tafazin mutations led to downstream effects which are present in Bar syndrome affected organisms. Overall, these studies support the fact that the technique used in Bar syndrome diagnosis involves the use of the monolysal cardiolipin to cardiolipin ratio to provide diagnostic information. Let's, do like a, let's look at a snapshot of Bar syndrome and cardiolipin. The reckoned it all, the methods of use, standardization of patient lipid samples. Fibroblast cell culture, Fulch, lipid extraction and thin layer chromatography, and lipid scintillation counting. The results that they got, the scientists reported, cardiolipin remodeling is strongly affected fibroblasts from patients with Bar syndrome. The conclusions that the scientists reported, cardiolipin levels are decreased and the remodeling is abnormal in fibroblasts from patients suffering with Bar syndrome. Angelini et al. Methods the scientists reported, Maldi MS, so matrix assisted data desorption analyzation time of flight mass spectrometry and vector algebra for lipid analysis with leukocyte membranes. Results mass spectrometry data on cardiolipin can be used for Bar syndrome diagnosis. Conclusions monolysis cardiolipin to cardiolipin obtained from Maldi time of flight, so we, that's the type of mass spectrometry, can be used as a diagnostic marker. So Gonzalez method designed to report transmission electron microscopy, respiratory analysis, blue native polyacrylic mygel electrophoresis, sodium geodecal sulfate, polyacrylic mygel electrophoresis, statistical analysis, and slow cytometry analysis. Flow cytometry analysis, excuse me. And then uh, conclusions. CR remodeling occurs in marine BTHS models. CR remodeling occurs in marine BTHS models and result as a result of Tavazin's function. One more time. CR remodeling occurs in marine BTHS models, which results or as a result of Tavazin's function. Okay. Analytical techniques used in lipidomics. Lipidomics involves the use of analytical techniques such as NMR, fluorescent spectroscopy, dual polarization interferometry, and in certain cases MS. So NMR is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. In, these, in the cases where, and we'll be using abbreviations for this section of the text, in the case where NMR, FS, DPI, or MS are used, these analytical techniques are coupled often with computational techniques. The role of these analytical techniques in lipidomics is discussed herein, with the goal of answering the following questions. Can the analytical techniques discussed present an alternative snapshot of the metabolic profile of patients, specifically the cardiolipin profile of patients with neurodegenerative diseases? So, let's talk about methods to assess the chemical constituents of the neurodegenerative disease patient's brain. So, NMR. Utility of NMR. NMR-based lipidomics has numerous advantages compared to degradative mass spectrometry lipidomic, anal- lipidomic techniques, including negligible effects on the sample being studied and high reproducibility of the analyses and results. Furthermore, NMR allows the facile identification of the different acyl species and molecular functionalities of lipids based on the characteristic patterns in the NMR spectrum. The high degree of precision of NMR spectrometers, NMR spectrometers in determining molecular dynamics and providing quantitative information on the number of atoms present are also advantageous. Hence, this method is useful for molecular characterization and can be used as a complementary method to mass spectrometry. 
the techniques and methods of use, and a mass spectroscopy provides information regarding the chemical environment where in atomic nuclei are found. This type of spectroscopy is commonly used for structure elucidation. One of the most widely used NMR techniques is proton NMR spectroscopy. With this type of spectroscopy, others with others, such as carbon and phosphorus, it can be assumed that only two spin states are likely. Since the distribution of electrons around chemically dissimilar hydrogen atoms is not equal, the induced fields and magnetic fields are different for different atoms. Even in the same external field, metabolites such as proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids can be studied using NMR spectroscopy techniques. NMR spectroscopy, particularly liquid state NMR spectroscopy, when used as a technique in lipidomics, may introduce a better alternative for studying lipids especially in disease states when compared to the degradative methods of most mass spectrometry techniques. Significance for lipidomics In MR, lipidomics has opened new opportunities because of its high selectivity and non-degenerative approach to sample ana analysis as opposed to that of MS. In addition, NMR lipidomics can provide further insights into potential biomarkers and potential therapeutic targets. The nuance and finesse of NMR lipidomics is due to NMR spectroscopy's accuracy in detecting variations of different nuclei. Additionally, the capacity of NMR to be multidimensional and coupled to imaging provides another layer of prowess for understanding brain constituents and changes during the progression of NDDs. The significance of NMR in NDD research has increased its influence both as imaging, both as an imaging tool in providing structural information. NDDs can be examined via multivariate analysis on a wide range of biomolecules. Unlike the other forms of spectroscopy, high resolution, high resolution NMR spectroscopy is not hindered by poor spectroscopic resolution and can provide systematic information about metabolites. In a study by Pettigrew et al, NMR was used to quantify the lipid composition of the extracts obtained using the Fulch method. A comparison of age match and non demented autopsy samples via NMR showed a significant decrease in phospholipid content. Furthermore, a study by Pizarro et al analyzed 94 plasma samples to distinguish patients with Parkinson's disease from those with Alzheimer's disease and classifying them according to Parkinson's disease severity. The technique used was considered optimal for differential diagnoses. So let's look at a snapshot of what we just discussed. Pedigree et al. talked about in a mass spectroscopy being used to quantify the lipid composition of the extracts obtained using the forge methods. The, the NDD that he was looking at, that they reported looking at was AD, so Alzheimer's disease, and they compared they compared with age match non dimensional control brain samples. So we discussed these studies already, so let's proceed through. So mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry is a quantitative analytical technique that can be used for integrated analyses of biological samples based off of the specific mass to charge ratios of biological molecules and the specific mass values of their functional groups. Mass spectrometry, as noted in the BTHS studies mentioned previously, can be used to further separate lipid classes and groups within the lipid class. MS Mass spectrometry, as abbreviation really used, can also be used to elucidate changes in lipid molecular structure or lipid content by providing insights using mass to charge ratios for the different acyl chains in terms of areas of saturation and saturation, example double bonds. This was observed in several BTHS studies, the are bar syndrome studies, where the differences in CL structure were determined using mass spectrometry. There are three main MS approaches used in lipidomics, which include direct infusion MS analysis, in which a crude lipid extract is infused into the MS instrument, and direct MS scan, typically used in high resolution MS. Another main MS approach used in chromatography coupled with an MS, either LCMS or GCMS, in which information of fatty acid composition is gained, and for LCMS, it provides a wide range of separation modes even more so with the reverse phase LC. The third main MS approach is the desorption ionization techniques, which allow the, for the analysis of biological tissues, which allow for the 
Để cho lão khó để Analysis of biological tissues and cells and provide information on the spatial distribution of individual molecules, including lipids, metabolites, and peptides. These techniques have a high degree of analytical sensitivity and specificity. MS is useful since the fragmentation of lipid molecules such as glycerol, phospholipids, results in selective separation. So shotgun MS and spatial distribution absorption ionization techniques between lipid classes due to commonalities between fragments which are common for lipid species belonging to the same class since they frequently differ only in a mass difference of two Daltons. Technique MS is an analytical technique that involves ionizing a chemical species into distinct ions of different masses and sawing those ions into a spectrum based on their mass to charge ratio. Okay, the purpose of the ionization period is to maximize the signal while minimizing space charge. Effects. The unique aspect. The unique aspect of the ion trap is its ability to perform multiple stages of mass spectrometry, which increases the amount of information on mass and part of loss of mass. It can be obtained from the analysis um, from the analysis of a molecule. Specifically, it provides information within considerable mass ranges and variable mass resolutions, and also as a capture site for ions. Significance for lipidomics. MS is one of the early quantitative tools that use that was used in the global profiling of genes, proteins, and lipid metabolites for lipidomics. Lipidomics has also been extensively performed to identify changes and abnormalities in the global lipid profile. So we will pick back up on technique and methods of use. Mass spectrometry is an analytical technique that involves ionizing chemical species into distinct ions of different masses and turning those ions into a spectrum based on their mass to charge ratio. The purpose of the ionization period is to maximize the signal while minimizing space charge effects. A unique aspect of the ion trap is its ability to perform multiple stages of mass spectrometry, which increases the amount of information on mass and comparative loss of mass that can be obtained from the analysis of a molecule. Specifically, it provides information within considerable mass ranges and variable mass resolution, and also as a capture site for ions. The significance for lipidomics. Mass spectrometry is one of the early quantitative tools that was used in the global profiling of genes, proteins, and lipid metabolites for lipidomics. Lipidomics has also been extensively performed to identify changes and abnormalities in the global lipid profile within a specific subclass of lipids. Lipidomics, whether performed in a clinical setting or to compare pre disease and post disease states, provide a quantitative snapshot in the profile of the analyte being studied. Hence, the coupling of mass spectrometry with modern analytical techniques such as NMR, FS, or other techniques can provide a more holistic profile analysis, especially in lipidomics. Shotgun lipidomics provides the framework for quantifying lipid species using an internal standard in the lipid extraction. Given that all analytes and internal standards are present in the sample matrix, Few factors to include are the concentration of the lipid classes, solvent, addition composition of the infusate, the biochemistry of the subclass, and the degree of unsaturation in the acyl chain of the lipid group. Likewise, the type of chromatographic technique used could result in either destruction of the sample, example in grass chromatography, or non-destructive sampling in lipid chromatography.
So there's more to discuss, there's more to, more to dive into. If you want to get more of it, you can check the thesis out, it's published. Um, so we'll just conclude with talking about cardiolipin based therapeutics. Neurogenic disease therapies can potentially use cardiolipin as a therapeutic target, as studies in sections 2 through 5 of this review presented. The importance of CLN's relationship with several of the hallmarks exhibited by NDDs. It has been reported and observed that NDDs exhibit similar underlying hallmarks, hallmarks such as protein, harmful protein accumulation, inflammation, oxidative stress, and mitochondrial dysfunction. Zetso et al. reported that there is a unique class of small mitochondrial directed molecules known as Zetso Schiller peptides. The SS peptides are synthetic tetrapeptides which include SS31 shown in figure 8. The cell permeable tetrape- tetrapeptides can capture electrons and selectively interact with cardiolipin to stabilize crystal bands. Once bound to cardiolipin, these peptides enter the heme environment of cytochrome C oxidase to promote the transfer. Cytochrome C oxidase is complex 4 to promote the transfer of electrons and prevent the conversion of cytochrome C to a peroxidase. This transfer of electrons in turn promotes ATP synthesis, reduces ROS production, and inhibits CL peroxidation. Additionally, the inhibition of CL oxidation affects apoptotic activity as well as the structure and function of the mitochondrial RSC, so our respiratory super complex. So if you want to read more about this, you can check it out. And in conclusion, in conclusion, Overall, SS31 prevents as a CL-based peptide that has therapeutic potential. First, this review supports the idea that CL, cardiolipin, has an integral role in the mitochondria, including in the functioning of the mitochondria's respiratory super complex, maintenance of mitochondrial structural integrity, and when oxidized, can serve as a pro-apoptotic apoptotic signal. So when oxidized, it can serve as a pro-apoptotic signal. Second, this review presents the idea that each NDD has a typical array of histopathological proteomic hallmarks, namely amyloid beta, in Alzheimer's disease, alpha synuclein, and Parkinson's disease, and Barr syndrome, in, which has mutated deposit. And all of these relate cardiolipin aberrations to disease progression, where CL cardiolipin is either aberrant in structure or interacting in vitro with the hallmark protein, amyloid beta, or alpha synuclein, and affecting the protein's morphology. In conclusion, this review thus presents a strong rationale for further research to be done using lipidomics for relating cardiolipin to NDDs and potentially determining the therapy potential of Zetcho Schiller 31, so SS31, a CL based therapeutic in neurodegenerative diseases. Well, thanks for listening. This is the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is the new chemist where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I.